We never give it a second thought that our skyscraper-filled cities have buildings that are well-designed and are able to stand the test of time. But according to experts gathered from around the world for the annual Bentley Year in Infrastructure Awards, there is more that goes into achieving this than meets the eye. Many of us take it for granted that our roads, bridges and public transportation systems will take us to where we want to go in the most direct route possible and in a safe and efficient manner. In essence, we have come to trust and rely on the infrastructure around us and we believe that it will serve us, meet our needs and function as designed. I think some of the biggest problems that engineers, designers and contractors are, are facing today are, are startup costs. Most of the projects you see today are brownfield projects, which means they're refurbishment projects or add-on projects to existing assets. And the problem is they don't have enough design history or documentation about that particular project. So they have to start from scratch, remodel everything all over again. Um, so that's huge. The second issue is collaboration. No company today does a project in their backyard. Um, projects are done all over the world. It's a very competitive environment. There's a lot of joint ventures and partnerships and you have to have to have a good collaboration system. You have to share data. You're going to have to make sure updates are synced. Um, and I think reality modeling is sort of a, a huge uh, helping uh, tool. Building information modeling, if you take it that literally, just generally refers to uh, making sure that we engineer not only how things look and are built, but how they behave and what are their performance characteristics so that we have that advantage when we're actually operating them. Where things have evolved, at one time, uh, of course, engineers worked with 3D models, architects and engineers. Constructors, these days, have a 3D model for every project they start. And then in operations and maintenance, we can also imagine having an as-operated 3D model through technology such as we call reality modeling, which can use drones and photography and laser scanning to put together a reality, immersive reality mesh to find all the other information. A great example of this is in Abu Dhabi's uh, new airport, the midfield terminal, where the architecture is such that it probably couldn't have been constructed at all without a very good job of uh, a BIM project. And that project has been done very well. Much of the work of designing and maintaining buildings and infrastructure have been radically affected by advancing digital technologies. We are now seeing more of a convergence between the physical world and the digital world, with technicians and engineers increasingly relying more heavily on data modelling and analysis to assess the suitability and efficiency of designs. I've been in this industry for, for over 30 years and uh, to us that have been working in this field, starting from you know, taking paper drawings and making and duplicating that onto the computer, and all the evolution that we've seen over time, to us it's, um, it's, a, it's sort of a kid in a candy store kind of an experience today because the amount of consumer technology, the investment in consumer technology that's being, giving us a new platform to work is staggering. So just from the computing power that's available on our fingertips, right? The, the devices you're walking around with your pocket have just have so much power that if you think of nothing that you sit somewhere and you take out your phone and you want access to information, consumer information. Just think about what that does to engineering information. Well, when we think of the impact from the digital space uh, so far, uh, each of us as individuals in our consumer lives uh, can talk about how differently and, and how extensively we're connected now uh, in all we do. But of course, reasonably enough, the opportunity to generate value on the industrial and infrastructure side of what we do would be even more so from connecting things together and information together. The great opportunity in going digital on the industrial and infrastructure side is to have the information created, the models intelligence used in the digital engineering models to pay off during operations and maintenance. So how reliable are these technologies and how accurate is this virtual information when compared to the final physical product? Really cool technology, first of all, and you know, HoloLens or the Google Cardboard or any of these VR type of tools, um, you know, that, that, that's exactly what they are, they're tools. 
you give a contractor a hammer and it could be dangerous. You know, the accountant has Microsoft Excel. He, at the end of the day, it's the operator and how they're using and interpreting it. Um, and engineers have been using tools, you know, software tools for a long time. So it's really the interpretation side of it. Um, the ground field detection of drones are now down to millimeter precision, uh, maybe maximum of two or three centimeters today. So the accuracy is, is really, really uh, profound. Um, HoloLens uh, has taken away a, a, a potentially a lot of safety issues as well. When contractors have to do walkthroughs, uh, when you have to do field inspections, um, you have to do them on some dangerous assets. You can now easily use a HoloLens or a drone out there, capture that information and, and bring it back. So um, there are dangers in terms of uh, interpretation of these results, but I think they're no different than any of the software tools that are out there today. Here at the Year in Infrastructure Awards and Conference, an annual gathering of leading figures in the world of infrastructure design, construction and operations, organizers Bentley Systems have outlined some of the major technological advances that they see in the pipeline, while showcasing the world's most innovative and ambitious projects from around the world. One value of the Year in Infrastructure event is that it, it helps us bring to the attention of the world, the great work of engineers, how that work is improving, how it's exciting to be involved in engineering at these times when going digital and doing more with digital engineering models is so evidently uh, possible. We're meeting that potential more quickly because of the best practice sharing that occurs here and the networking among our users and among our software developers to learn what our priorities should be. Today, no matter where you go, people are able to see the fact that, listen, we're going to spend five times what we're spending in the design and construction or ten times what we're spending in design and construction to operate this thing. And they're learning from each other. Then other people from all over the world can come and listen to what they did and learn from what they did and then replicate that. So we're finding that kind of collaboration happening such that when you're doing something in one part of the world, we can tell them, hey, why don't you guys go look at what they did in, in England? So since we do work around the world, and we do work around different industries, we're able to pick the best practices from the oil and gas industry and bring that to transportation. Pick the best practices from what's happening in the Middle East and bring that to Australia. So there's such a, a beautiful way to bring all of this stuff together. According to the experts in attendance at this year's event, many of whom are at the leading edge of technologies that we are only just starting to see affect our day-to-day -day lives, the ways in which structures will be built and managed are about to advance even further. As I like to say, we've uh, gotten so accustomed to using apps on our phones that uh, whether we're traveling on planes or traveling with cars, driving, that uh, we think nothing of putting in the address or where we're going and it's going to tell us automatically where the traffic is, which way to go. Gone are the days you can print out the static set of instructions and then that's it, right? You're going to react live to changes. We bring that sort of mindset to our engineering life. The amount of data that we're generating is crazy. Um, as you're going to see the pervasiveness of sensors in construction, you're going to get feedback a lot on the asset that you've designed. And I think what's going to happen is that we need to give back this data into a reusable and decipherable form to the end user. Uh, collecting it has been easy and you can store exabytes of data. So we can do that because we can analyze all the past information and even more, we can analyze the information generated through all projects being created by all users. Of course, you know, we keep all the confidential information behind it. And then we can kind of say, you know, other people that design, design substations have been doing it about 10% faster than you. Um, so this sort of personalization of data analytics and understanding that with our project-wise connected projects and all of the design applications we have, I think that's going to be revolutionary. So in a world where smart cities of the future are right now being conceived, whether it be driverless transport, solar rooftops or connected houses, the way in which we use technology to collaborate will continue to allow designers and engineers to turn our dreams of the future into reality.